So what about the state of Oregon blowing up a whale with dynamite? Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. So back in the day, back in my day, yes, a million years ago, there used to be this this, this show on TV, I think it was Sunday afternoons, and it was called Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Anyway, so this, I never got to find out who Ripley was, but Jack Palance used to present it, famous actor, and they would basically go through stories that you think, no way, that, that couldn't possibly be true, but they were, they were, that was the that was the whole shtick. That was the whole program. Anyway, so, on the theme of Ripley's Believe It or Not, this is not, I'm not trying to recreate that show in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, uh, there's a little known story out there which I happened to trip across, and I thought, wow, really? And it was really, yes. It turns out that 50 years ago, uh, the state of Oregon had a bit of a problem. They needed to get rid of a whale that had washed up on a beach so they did what what any council authority would do they they blew it up with dynamite as you do yeah that's an actual thing that really happened you don't believe me do you well here check this out this is from the washington post you can read it yourself. We're going to take a little bit of a dive into it, this, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, to see what exactly happened 50 years ago and how did it all end. Well, not well for the whale, obviously, but uh, what else happened for um, the community at large and the people who were involved in the scheme? 50 years ago, Oregon exploded a whale in a burst that, quote, blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. Oh, yeah. Some stories you just can't look away. You've just got to read on. Yeah, so a piece here from uh, Katie Shepard in the uh, Washington Post. As you can see, a picture uh, of the explosion. This is actual footage, an actual photo of the exploding uh, whale. Um, 1970. Let's see exactly what went on, who was involved, and how did the whole thing pan out in the end. Um... Right, on a clear November day in 1970 in Florence, Oregon, state highway engineers lit 20 cases of dynamite to blow apart a 45-foot sperm whale carcass that had washed up on the beach and festered for three days. Unfortunately, the explosion it did not go as planned. The engineers intended for the 8-ton carcass to be thrown into the ocean in pieces. Instead, chunks of flesh flew toward the beach beachside town and fell from the sky crushing a car a quarter mile away and raining down on a crowd who had gathered to watch the pyrotechnics yeah uh, this was built up as a bit of a bit of a kind of thing bring your kids to the show sort of thing uh and what have we got here from k2 katu news a uh, bit of a twitter sphere thing here can we watch this on twitter who's this lad let's have a look see if we can play this here problem on its hands. It had a stinking whale of a problem. What to do with one 45-foot, 8-ton whale dead on arrival on the beach near Florence? It had been so long since a whale had washed up in Lane County, nobody could remember how to get rid of one. In okay, yeah, so you kind of get the picture there. Let's read on. Uh, they had a bit of a problem. This big whale washed up onto the beach. This, this is, I assume, this beach town, coastal town, maybe a touristy place, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, well, how do you get rid of an eight-ton whale? It's just there. It's not going anywhere. It's dead. So, um, yeah, bit of a problem for the townsfolk, you might say. Uh, the spectacular failure and the remarkable, we'll read on here in the Washington Post from Katie. Uh, the, the spectacular failure and the remarkable local newscast that captured the event have since become enshrined in Oregon history. So beloved that Florida residents voted to name a park earlier this year after the detonated sea mammal. So the whale's now famous 50 years on. It's famous for having been blown up. To celebrate the event's 50th anniversary on Thursday, the Oregon Historical Society released a remastered video of the original broadcast and the TV station interviewed the former employees who recorded it. 
quote. I was asked about it virtually every day of my life or commented on it by everybody, strangers alike. Uh, Paul Lindman, the, co- the on-camera reporter, told KATU. Uh, when the whale washed ashore on November the 9th, 1970, as, Lin- as Lindman reported at the time, it had been so long since the community had encountered a beached cetacean. Is that a word? Cetacean? All right, I'm sorry. I'm not very well up with my uh, oceanography linguistics. Cetacean. Oh. It's good I should use that. Uh, that no one knew how to dispose of the animal. So they were at a bit of a loss. It wasn't something that happened uh, often. As officials pondered the problem, a body began the body began to decay, festering until the surrounding beach smelled of rot. I think I can smell shite. Which is probably not good for your tourist industry if, you, if your whole beach smells of, of rotting carcass. What the hell is that shit? Uh, the, final, the state finally enlisted engineers from the Oregon State Highway Division three days later to... Uh, as they say here, disintegrate the body using a half ton of dynamite, hoping most of the pieces would be washed away by the sea or eaten by scavengers. Um, Quote, I'm confident that that it'll work, engineer George Thornton told Linman. Moron. Uh, In the moments before the explosion, uh, the only things is the only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing. So the scavenger seagulls and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. So, so they hadn't a clue, basically. Uh, how much explosives do we need, lads? I don't know. Uh, uh, half a ton? A ton? Two tons? Well, I don't know. What have we got in the shed? Uh, I think that was pretty much the metric. I'm not sure if anybody had worked anything out here. Not really very well if they did, by the sounds of this. Uh, let's read on. The dynamite... When the dynamite detonated, a cloud of sand and and whale puffed into the air. Onlookers sitting on the sandbanks about a quarter mile away erupted with cheers and laughter. So they were getting their money's worth uh, from from the show. (laughs) At least at the start, anyway. Lindemann and cameraman Doug Brazil who had arrived at the beach near the midpoint of Oregon's coastline with cameras in hand, captured the moment the excited crowd suddenly realised the rancid blubber that had propelled into the air would soon plummet back onto their heads. There was a bit of a, a, bit of a sting in this, uh, in this tale. Here comes pieces of a whale, a woman said, her tone incongruously calm as the flesh came hurtling back to the ground, landing with a stomach-flipping squelch. Lindman, in his news report, said, quote, The blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. Well, that's a a, a string of words you don't often hear, uh, I have to say. Uh, Although the story was well told in Oregon, it didn't lodge itself into the national imagination until 20 years later, when Miami Herald humorist Dave Barry found a copy of the video and called it, quote, the most wonderful event in the history of the universe. Well, I think... I'm not sure if you quite go that far with it, but, um, yeah, humorist is right. Uh, Since then, the event has been recounted in news stories, humour columns, interviews, and even a book that Lindman got a book out of it. And the two journalists who documented the shocking event never heard the end of it. So they were always those lads. Weren't you those lads that were there when when they blew up the whale? Quote, I'd come out of Starbucks at 7am. This is Lindman, I'd say. It is, yeah. I'd come out of Starbucks at 7am, run into someone, they'd say, hey, I bet no one's mentioned the whale to you yet. Lindman told KATU on Thursday, yeah, the guy at the Oregonian box an hour ago mentioned it to me. <laughs> so he couldn't get away from it. He forever became typecast as that guy who, who was there when the whale blew up. Despite the chaotic mishap, the incident wasn't the last time explosives have been used to dispose of dead whales. All right, so they kind of started the thing here. Uh, others, have, others have since used controlled explosions <laughs> controlled to break apart carcasses though they often set the explosives off in the ocean away from the shoreline in the, in the end besides the crushed car uh, the near disaster ended without any serious injuries or lasting damage to florence in fact the event became the city's claim to fame and florence in june christened a riverfront park 
quote, exploding whale memorial park. You couldn't make it up, could you? You couldn't make it up. They named the park after the exploded whale uh, to mark the 50th adventure. To have it live as story still on internet after 50 years is just amazing, Mr. Brazil told KA. To you. So there you have it. It was true all along. I see. I wouldn't lie to you. Not in this channel. I wouldn't lie to you on this channel. They did. The state of Oregon in 1970 blow up a whale using dynamite. Well, what else were they supposed to do? I mean, they had to shift it some way. So, you know, if in doubt, half ton of dynamite is your only man. <laughs>